Hi, I'm Catherine Gray, founder of She Angel Investors and co-founder of the She Angels Foundation. I'm also the podcast host of Invest in Her and an award-winning producer, author, and TEDx speaker. Our show, Invest in Her, features phenomenal female founders and funders. As you know, women receive less than 2% of venture capital funding. Our series is about accelerating the funding of women by connecting them to funding resources. Let's meet today's guest. Welcome to this week's episode of Invest in Her. I'm your host, Catherine Gray, founder of She Angel Investors and co-founder of the She Angels Foundation. And as you know, we're all about connecting women to funding resources. Today, I have on an incredible guest. She's a serial entrepreneur. She is the co-founder and president of a fantastic company that's helping impact climate change. Please welcome to the show, Kat Day of Etitude. Hi, Kat. How are you? Hi, good. Thanks for having me here. Good. Really well, excited I, to be here. I am excited to talk about this amazing product that you have that uh, is uh, bamboo sheets, uh, bathroom essentials, clothing that is really helping impact the planet. And I want to talk about how you got involved in this, how you've raised $5 million to help perpetuate this company and about your incredible background. First, I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, I always like to know what is people's backgrounds? How did they get from there to here? You know, and so you were just sharing with me uh, that you were born in Russia. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So I was born in Russia, moved to New York City at the age of 13, didn't speak any English and uh, had to kind of learn and adapt and uh, really welcomed New York City as my place and became a New Yorker. I lived there for almost 20 years before uh, recently moving to Los Angeles. So awesome. now I'm an Angelina. I'm loving it here. <laughs> Love it. One of my favorite cities, New York. I just got back from there myself. And uh, but glad you're out here with us in L.A. Um, so, you know, you came here to this country, not even like you said, speaking the language. And here you are a successful female entrepreneur. I know with an incredible education, Wharton School, one of the best. Um, how did you make this huge leap into learning the language and becoming an entrepreneur? Like what? What was it? What was the catalyst to you becoming an entrepreneur? Yeah, I think um, I've always kind of explored things outside of just school. I always had uh, other activities and interests that I, I wanted to uh, give my time to. And that, I think, helped to develop uh, a certain uh, propensity for creating new things. And I think entrepreneurship is ultimately about creation and growth. Um, so after I graduated from Columbia undergrad, uh, where I studied a completely useless topic of, uh, uh, I, I actually studied literature, global literature, I realized that, you know, there, there's something more that I could do. And um, I actually went into business. I became a consultant. I did strategy consulting for a while. And um, I learned a lot through that process, uh, but I also had a passion on the side that I wanted to explore. I wanted more than just, you know, helping to grow someone else's company. I wanted something else for myself. And uh, I had multiple passions that I was interested in at the time, and I explored them through various ways. I actually started a club of, um, you know, people who were excited about extreme international foods, which at the time was my, my passion. And uh, that grew into creating a service uh, that grew into my first company, which was called Try the World, which is a food subscription that sends you international gourmet to your doorstep. And that was the first company that actually disrupted the global food supply chain by becoming the first importer, distributor, and retailer all in one, and uh, was named number three fastest growing company in New York City. Wow. Yeah, I read that. That, um, that was in Crane. Uh, that's fascinating. And then you had an exit with that company, right? It was correct. In 2017, that company was acquired and uh, I was starting to look for the next big thing. You know, I'm not a kind of person who just rests and uh, hangs out on the beach, although I love the beach. I, I, I'm all about restoration, uh, but I didn't want to do that for too long. Um, so I was looking for the next big thing and I came across Attitude. 
Um, so Attitude, which stands for Eco Attitude, is a material science company and a sustainable lifestyle brand. Uh, we have new technology fiber and fabrics that are better for the planet as well as better for you. And uh, the way that I discovered that is actually through uh, AngelList online. Uh, the founder and CEO, uh, Phoebe Yu, who uh, is a textile innovator, she spent years in, uh, she spent decades in the textile industry. And um, she, she perfected this technology and commercialized it. And so uh, by the time that we met, uh, she was already starting to see some traction in, uh, in, in, the, in the world and with consumers actually buying the final goods. Um, and she was looking for a partner to help her scale this company globally. So we met up uh, online. She sent me a sample of the products, which at the time our main core flagship product is actually the, the sheets, uh, sheets made out of clean bamboo fabric. Uh, which is the cleanest and most sustainable as well as the most comfortable fabric on the market today. And I fell in love with the product. Uh, it was the softest and most breathable silky sheets that I've ever slept in. And I literally slept like a baby uh, that first night. And, and going forward, I have amazing sleep, <laughs> really value my sleep now. Um, my husband loved it as well. And, uh, you know, he convinced me to join the company. So I ended up joining as co-founder and president. I love that. And, um, you know, I, I know that like people might say, well, how does this compare to other products like cotton or whatever? And I know that there's, uh, that those products aren't as good for the environment, right. As your product, which is, you know, I think a lot of young people, they're wanting to buy things and invest in things that, you know, are helping make the world a better place uh, with the climate uh, situation and the environment. And that's what your product does, right? Yes, absolutely. So we actually did a third party life cycle assessment, uh, which actually measures your uh, impact on the environment of your product versus conventional products. And uh, it was shown scientifically that our clean bamboo uh, saves 38% of carbon emissions, as well as 99% of water versus cotton. And of course, on top of that, we don't use any harmful chemicals at all in the process uh, versus cotton. It requires a lot of pesticides and fertilizer to actually grow lots of land, lots of water. It's one of the thirstiest crops um, uh, on, on the planet, actually, it's, it's very thirsty. It requires tons of water. And of course, there are labor issues in the industry too. So we wanted to get away from that. And uh, with our new technology, we're able to use bamboo, which is a super plant. Uh, it's the fastest growing plant on earth. And it doesn't require any pesticides or harmful chemicals at all. Um, no pesticides, no fertilizer. And actually doesn't require any irrigation either. It grows completely on rainwater. So from a resource perspective, it's incredibly efficient. Um, the issue with it before is that people didn't know how to take raw bamboo and turn it into fabrics without the use of harmful and harsh chemicals. Um, so you might see other bamboo fabrics on the market um, and they're all viscose. Viscose from bamboo actually does use caustic soda, which is a harmful chemical bad for the environment. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, it's not good for you to touch the fabric that's made with toxic chemicals. We solve that problem. We use no toxic chemicals at all. Uh, we use an organic solvent that you could put your hand in and nothing will happen to your hand. Um, and of course, all of our bamboo is completely organically grown. Um, so at the end of it, you receive a product that is clean. That's why we call it clean bamboo. And the resulting so, fabric is incredibly soft as well. So not all bamboo products are the same. Absolutely. Like so you all have some sort of patented uh, procedure that you use. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So it's a proprietary technology that is patented in major markets. And um, also, of course, uh, we wanted to come up with a name for this fiber and this fabric that is much more accessible to people. So clean bamboo is a trademark that we came up with um, to explain that this is a better version of previous bamboo fabrics. You know, and I, that's so awesome. And I, and I read something like to make a pair of cotton jeans takes like gallons and gallons of water, right? Is, you know, it's just, uh, 
what we don't know is so harmful. And I'm glad there's companies like yours creating healthier, safer, better for the environment products. And I'm glad that you're educating people about it. And I'm so glad that to have you on the show to educate people about why they should be using the Attitude pro- uh, products instead of you know cotton and other materials, like you said, that are harmful to the environment. Why not? It's such an easy thing that we could do. An easy habit to change is to have these kind of clean energy products. Um, mm-hmm. And I want to get back to to you saying why you became an entrepreneur. I think that is a catalyst for why a lot of people leave corporate America to start their own company. They they have their own ideas and they don't want to work for someone else. They want to create their own products and ideas. And um, I love that you just went for it. Um, I think some people might say, how do you raise you know, $5 million? That's really impressive. Is this going through um, angel investors, venture capital, some of both? Is it other ways? Like, let's educate our listeners as to, you know, if they have a great idea like you had, how do they really, you know, get that off the ground? What's your advice? Yeah, absolutely. And um, $5 million is actually over the course of four years. Uh, So uh, we started out with running the business very efficiently. So we didn't actually need to raise a whole lot to reach the milestones that we have. Uh, We were actually named uh, Inc. 5000's fastest growing company twice in a row now. Um, so we were able to do that on an incredibly small amount of capital, um, you know, relatively speaking. Um, one advice that I have is make sure you have a great product first before you go out for, you know, raising any money for it. Um, wait, you, how do you, how do you make sure that you have that great, uh, product? Great product? Mm-hmm. Um, well, first I think you need to have some sort of industry expertise, at least, um, you know, some, some expertise in the area or at least be a user of a product that you're trying to create and uh, have a unique perspective on uh, what the gap is and, and uh, what would solve the problem. Uh, so start there, um, create a minim- minimal viable product, and then start to get user feedback. Uh, that's kind of the, the best approach that you know, startup, uh, startup start. Um, and once you have a minimal viable product, you'll start getting feedback, you start perfecting your product, uh, getting better and better, and, and then you can um, get some sales um, and hopefully get some traction. Whether it, It's not necessarily to have even sales to raise money, but you should have some sort of traction or feedback from customers that are solving their problem. Um, so once you have that, and I'm talking mostly from, you know, I would say this would be applicable in the consumer goods space or the software space. It's probably not applicable in places that do require a long R&D process. Obviously, that would take capital um, before you actually have a product. Um, but in most cases, if, it, if it's not too expensive to bring a product to market, if you can, the further along you can bring it uh, by bootstrapping, I think the better it is. Um, and then the way that you raise capital really depends, again, on your network, on your background. Um, in my case, we started out with an accelerator. Uh, we did an accelerator in New York City called ERA, um, and that was the first capital into the business. And then after that, through their network, we were able to raise uh, a bit more capital um, on a convertible note, um, as well as through lots of networking and introductions. And then you know we did another convertible note, and then we did a price round, uh, which was our seed round. And then you know more recently, we've done a seed extension. Is what we called it. Awesome. That's really invaluable information to share. And so, you know, I do think uh, accelerators are a wonderful way for people to get off the ground. It seems like most of the successful businesses have started with an accelerator. And now there's so many out there in almost every city that it is something that people should look into if they want to start off and have like a village and a network around them as well as the funding, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a great start, especially if first time entrepreneur. Not only is it a helpful network for actually raising capital, but uh, they, they have an entire program to help you work on your business and uh, get it off the ground. Um, so I would highly recommend it for first time entrepreneurs. 
Right. So I'm imagining that everyone's wanting to know how to get the attitude uh, products, uh, the sheets, the bath essentials, the uh, clothing. Um, so do they go to attitude.com? Absolutely. Attitude.com. We, um, we will be anticipating a Labor Day sale. So look out for that. Uh, so definitely take, take a look and sign up for our email uh, list. Great. And um, what about on social? Where do we find you all? So you can find us on Instagram at Attitude Store and on TikTok, Attitude. Oh, fun. Do you do some fun TikTok videos? There are some fun TikTok videos. Definitely check it out. Okay. And your products, they can see on uh, Instagram, I take it? On Instagram, on our website, uh, and you'll probably see them hopefully in some stores soon. Oh, great. Oh, I was going to say, what's the future? What's the next big thing? So you're working on getting into the stores. Yes. Uh, so we're actually already partnering with a number of stores. Uh, we are on their online uh, websites. So we're on urbanoutfitters.com and we're on bedbathandbeyond.com. Fantastic. And, uh, hopefully one day we'll be in retail as well. That is awesome. Well, bravo. And, you know, I love seeing someone young like yourself, like just really kicking it. And uh, it's awesome. You're such an inspiration to others that I know are sitting there on product ideas and they don't know where to begin. And uh, we actually launched a course called Six Ways to Fund Your Business because we do find like a lot of people do have an idea, but they don't know how to access the funding. And I appreciate you sharing how you got started. And the accelerator is a wonderful way to to go. And of course, there's grants and loans and, you know, crowdfunding and and different ways that people can get at least get started uh, and then eventually work their way into angel or investors and venture capital. So thanks for sharing your journey. And uh, Looking forward to uh, meeting you here in person soon. I know we're working on some things together. So um, thanks for sharing. And I hope people will follow you on social um, as well as following us. She Angel Investors and Catherine Gray at uh, Invest in Her on Instagram as well. Um, And I think you can find us both on uh, LinkedIn, right? Absolutely. Cat Day. All right, Cat. Oh, so wonderful to meet you. I'm so glad we met at Gangels, uh, which is Lorenzo Theoni's amazing LGBTQ uh, venture capital and angel group. Um, and so many amazing people are part of that. And I'm so I'm so happy that I met you at his event um, and uh, just wish you all the luck with what you're doing, with your with your raises and your incredible products that are help changing the world. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you very much. It's great right, to be Kat. here. Have a great week. Have a great Take week, care. everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Remember, if you're looking to launch a business or grow your business, check out our e-course, Six Ways to Fund Your Business, available at She